Hi there, uh, my name is Alex South. This is my library and I'm going to give you a little tour. It's slightly awkward because of course I'm, I'm here alone and I'm filming this myself and, um, and we're doing this digitally. Uh, but I'm going to pretend that I'm giving someone a tour and just, just show some cool stuff as informally as I would in real life. Um, the thing that I would normally be most excited to share with people is my collection of photographically illustrated children's books. It, it's a little tricky right now because um, a lot of the, the best of these books are currently on exhibition at the Minneapolis Institute of Arts, but, um, but I'll show you a few. And, and the, the reason I, I love these books is because for me, they get at the heart of, of what the physical object of the book is. So that if you think about being a child and first being exposed to books and you're like chewing on them and, and they're, they're so tactile. And, and, and this to me is the spirit of the photo book. It's a physical object. Um, probably the, the, the best known photographically illustrated children's book is this one. I have a bunch of copies of it. I, I like it all torn up because that, that's also how I remember kids' books. Um, another one from that same series of The Lonely Doll is, is this, Edith and Big Bad Bill. Um, you can see that maybe uh, the sort of <laughs> the content was a little different back in the day. Um, I, I have something called uh, Little Brown Mushroom, which is, uh, it's whatever I want it to be. It's my it's like pretend business. We used to publish photo books and, and, and this is an example of one, uh, a book by Trent Park. But the, the style of this book, this like hard cover little book, and it's got, uh, you know, text and image, is really based on this, this kind of books called Little Golden Books for Children. A lot of you know this, they have these golden spines. And most of them are traditional children's books. This one's photographically illustrated. But this was the inspiration uh, for Little Brown Mushroom, is this style of something kind of inexpensive, physically tactile and memorable in that sort of way. Um, I'll show you some other cool books. Uh, I, I kind of, whenever I meet book dealers, I ask them if they have anything in this category. And you can see that this is uh, montage. Uh, really beautiful, really beautiful colors here. Uh, what else? What else do I have that's worth showing? Um, I've got, uh, I sometimes I like sort of uh, instructional books for kids, kids that things that maybe help them. This one, uh, Grandpa and Me, we learn about death, uh, and it's actually yeah, I posted something about this on Instagram, and and this is funny, and but it actually helped a lot of kids, and that's something to think about. It really takes a, a child, you know, through the process of loving their grandparent. And then, you know, towards the end of the book, we have the funeral and, and, and helping kids deal with grief. I think it's actually a very, a very sweet book. Uh, what else do I have in here? Yeah, another, another one in that category is my parents' divorce. Um, so the kind of the usefulness of photo books. So, so there's that collection. Uh, and then of course there's many, many, uh, traditional photo books. So I'm going to hand hold this thing now. So if we go over here, probably, you know, I was thinking like, whose books do I have the most of? And it's probably Robert Adams, which is, you know, as we start here, these books are organized, uh, by, by last name. And so up here in the A's, we got lots of Adams. 
gonna go all the way down here. Um, but the ones I wanted to talk about were these two, Summer Nights and, and this one called Around the House. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring them over here, this other part of my studio, and attempt to do this, this thing over. Yeah, here we go. So Summer Nights was, was really the first book I fell in love with. And one of the things I love about it is actually this design, this, this not cool design, very dated. Um, but I have such a memory of it. And again, it's beat up. Uh, it's not signed or anything like that. I don't really care. And it's, and it's a humble object. Um, and it's really just Adams wandering around at night. It starts off with this William Blake, and then we go into the images. So extraordinary. So, so simple. And another, you know, simple Adams book is this one uh, called Around the House. And I, I feel like this one is the, uh, is really the, the coronavirus stay at home book before it's time. And, and, and what it is, it's just Adams wandering around the house. I mean, Adams, I think, you know, is someone who's long appreciated social distance. And it's his simple little house pictures of his yard, his house, the sky, little pleasures. And I think there, there's something to be learned from all of us from this kind of, this kind of simple image making at this time. And some of these, you know, they're not great pictures at all, but that's not always how a photo book works. Um, sometimes it's great pictures and in between moments that help tell the story. Adams is a woodworker, so shows his wood shop and some of his objects. Anyway, it's a beautiful book. So to continue the tour here, here we go. Um... Another another little subcategory of things that I collect are photo albums. Again, because photo albums, you know, kind of like that Adams book, are sort of speak to you know the the heart of photography. This very simple way of putting together images that mean something. So uh, I have a number of albums. There's a few here. There's there's a bunch down here. Um, the ones that I wanted to pull out are, I, I gotta, let me just bring a clump of them over here to our little viewing area again. Bear with me. So let's see, what do I got here? Oh, you know what I was gonna also show you is before I get into the albums, one thing that I've been, um, collecting lately are are just raw photo photographs what do you mean raw photographs i mean just vernacular pictures but almost almost uh any kind of picture so i'm just going to turn this around and show you um so like down here so this box here uh, this is 50 50 pounds of photographs and, and what's so fascinating about it is the meaninglessness of it. Just, just pictures separated from their meaning. Here's another, uh, this is like a, oops, let me turn it this way. This is a, a suitcase of pictures that I have. These are some of the better ones that I have, but again, just just anonymous pictures and and they can be you know really beautiful or mysterious or what have you um but but separated from 
other pictures, what meaning do they have? And that's what happens when you look at a photo album. So this one, I can't even remember where I bought this, but I think it was just at some junk shop. And it kind of starts out in a wax museum. And then we have family pictures. And then you'll see here, so, you know, a little glimpse of death, okay? And then newspaper clippings about a car accident. This kind of, this narrative develops of a car accident and of a tragedy. And finally, these pictures. And so suddenly, these, these very anonymous pictures of people that we don't know, next to this tragedy, take on a different meaning. Uh, here's... This, this is an album I love. I, I like uh, obsessive collectors. And so this is an album. It's just... It's pictures of women... As far as I can tell, uh, one photographer made all these pictures, but I'm not really sure. Um, they could be collected, or they could have been made by him, but I like to think they were made. I really love this one. Um, and I love the way that they are so carefully placed into this album. And by, you know, by pictures being t together next to each other, again, I, I have this vision of who the, the author might be. Another example of that, uh, even creepier, is this album. These are all cut-out pictures of women. And I'm pretty sure that these are all by the, the same photographer. They sort of look like, I don't know, it looks like Eastern Europe to me. It's a little experimental here. So, there's some albums. What else do we have to look at? Um, the actual bookshelves, as I said, are kind of organized by last name of the photographer, you know, A through Z. Um, one thing I, I often tell people is that if, if you're gonna be a, you know, professional uh, photographer who makes photo books, you probably don't want to have a name that starts with G, a last name that starts with G, because there are so many good ones that it's hard to get shelf space. So that, uh, I mean, it's, it's constantly a problem here where, you know, we have Stephen, Stephen Gill over here. We've got, and then the golds are a killer because you have Goldberg, Goldblatt, Goldies, Golden, uh, it just, and then you get down to Gossage and Paul Graham, and it, there's just too many of them. Um, so that, that's, a, that's constantly a problem. We have other uh, little areas of books. So we, down here, we have uh, this whole row down here are uh, photo books about photo books, which is sometimes a bit much. And down here, this is an area of, of books about vernacular photography. So this fantastic series uh, by Eric Kessel's the In Almost Every Picture series. Uh, and the, one, the one I'd love to show people is this book, Nine Uncle. Um, let, me, let me bring this over to our, our little viewing area. 
All right, this is kind of a workout here. Um, flip this thing over. Whoops. Uh oh. There we go. So, so this is uh, this book is by Archive of Modern Conflict, who they just make some of the the best books, and and for me this is one of the best books on uh, vernacular photography. And it has such a tactile quality. This, the cover of this book, it's this kind of soft, puffy cover, was 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 what I referenced in making a songbook, my book songbook. And so, what the book is is pictures of Nazis uh, in leisure time, and. You don't, you don't get any pictures of carnage. It's Nazis having fun. It's printed beautifully on this, on this really you know, lush, uncoated paper. So it's, it's kind of a luxurious experience looking at this book. And the pictures are kind of... People are laughing, it's full of joy, and all of that makes it just all the more haunting. Um, as you go through the book, I'm just gonna skip ahead a little bit. It starts to get even darker. Um, going to the zoo here. Nice landscapes. And then there's this, let's see here. There's this kind of uh, homoerotic quality to some of the pictures. book is just chilling to me. Uh, always leaves me feeling queasy. So that's a real favorite. Uh, what else to show you? Uh, if we come over here, I usually have some books out that I'm that I'm that I'm looking at at any given time. This is uh, this is a, a this is not a really a photo book. It's a book uh, about Thomas Merton's uh, little magazine that he called Monk's Pond, uh, which is an, an impossible zine to to buy, but uh, it's the collected Monk's Pond issues, and and it has some interesting photography in it, including Merton's own photography as well as uh, his friend Ralph Eugene Meatyard's photography. Uh, what else? This is a new Francesca Woodman book. I think it's the only one that I have. I was never a big fan of Francesca Woodman, um, but I was traveling with my daughter recently, and it was the first photo book that she bought. I, I've snuck it to my library for now to spend time with it, but um, but I think it it speaks to that early desire to to consume photographs and 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 weirdly i i mean i think that meat yard and francesca woodman uh there's something it's like it's like young women are drawn to her and young men are often drawn to him uh why do i have this life magazine out the the reason i saw a show of um wow why am i spacing out on the show oh it was a Dwayne michaels show and in this Dwayne Michael show, he had some other other people's pictures that he loved, and let me. I'm gonna have to pull this thing out to show you, but um, let's do it this way. But let's see if I can do this. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a woman that um, that committed suicide and landed and made this just a, a, a 
a young photographer was walking by and made this picture of her I, as, after she had jumped from the Empire State Building. Incredible image. Um, so I saw that picture in the show and I needed to track down the original Life magazine. Um, let's see, this book, this is a new book uh, by Carmen Winant. It's called uh, Notes on Fundamental Joy, Seeking the Elimination of Oppression Through Social and Political Transformation of the Patriarchy that Otherwise Threatens to Bury Us. And it's this is for sure going to be one of my favorite books of 2020. Um, and it's it's an incredible... It's a group of women together photographing their bodies. It's sort of uh, pictures of women for women in this safe space. And I've thought a lot about this book and I've thought about uh, writing about it, but it's, it's one that as a guy, I, I feel weary of showing the pictures online because it's the whole idea is for women to have a safe space. And so it's, it feels wrong for me to show the pictures of this, but I really encourage you to buy this book. Uh, this book, The Face of Madness, uh, this is, I actually owned this book before I was a photographer, before I knew Robert Adams, before anything. And I just loved it. It, it was uh, beautiful and terrifying. And I recently wrote about, I actually, I actually lost this book and then bought a new copy and then refound the old issue that I had. But, um, and I'm, there's one picture in here that I want to show you. Because this picture, I think, is, is one of my top, I, you know, I was thinking about, I'm kind of always revising my top 10 photographs of all time. And there's a picture in here. Let's see if I can find it. This this picture. This man here on the left. And actually, I mean, this is an incredible pair of photographs, but this man on the left in an insane, insane asylum. He's, he's kind of cross-eyed. He's wearing this you know, somewhat, maybe once it was a, a nice coat. He's kind of in his best clothes. Um, there's a vulnerability to this picture. Wow, it's just, I'm crazy about it. Anyway, uh, so what else to show you? All right, so behind, behind these shelves are, are just weird things that don't fit on the shelf. So, you know, for example, the, the very important Kim Kardashian selfies book, which, you know, I think is an important book. I don't quite know where to put this on my shelves. I guess it goes under Kardashian. Uh, what else we have here? Oh, this is, uh, I have a newsletter with Little Brown Mushroom, which if you're a book nerd, I, uh, I suggest signing up for it, but this is Alan Rupersberg's uh, 24 Pieces book that I showed. Um, I also have his 23, 24, 25 Pieces book. Uh, what else? We got How to Take Great Pictures, Great Photos from Airplanes. Uh, oh, I've got a collection of photographic comic books. So... And these come from all over. So there are, you know, British ones, German ones. Uh, what else we got here? Da, 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 da. Uh, let me... Uh, like, you know, Spanish. Uh, all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, what else do we have under, under here now? Uh, da, 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 da. This book is kind of amazing. Dictionary of Russian Gestures. And it just shows people doing Russian gestures and what they mean. Uh, da, da, da. Um, 
you know, like wrestling, old wrestling books. I mean, kind of anything that uses photography. Um, old old cross dressing zines. Uh, oh, this is this is a really interesting book. I'm gonna bring this one over to show you. So this is called uh, White Trash Cooking, and. And so what it is, is, you know, it's just a cookbook. But then in the back, the back of the book, or is it in the back of the book? Sorry. In the middle of the book, you have these photographs that very much look like Eggleston pictures. That's a nice, peculiar little book. Uh, what else do we got to show you? Uh, so there's, you know, basically just the normal library stuff. Uh, you know, there's there's no end of stuff I could show you. Uh, Nigel Shaffron's book, Ruth on the Phone. Just pictures of his wife on the phone. Total killer. Oh! It, here's the thing. If you want to uh, catch a photographer's attention when you send them a book, uh, here's, a, here's a technique. This one's called Alex Soth, I made, a, I made You a Book. So I had to keep that one. What else do we have? Uh, we go down here. These are, these are group books. Um, this series... New Color, New Work, and New Color Photography. I'm constantly referencing. Had a huge influence on me. These, um, it was really the, like, the, uh, when photography, when color photography became accepted, these books uh, were at the forefront of that. I saw them in college. I totally fell in love. Uh, what else we got? And then we have, like, my books, uh, so down here, my books, um, maybe it's, I wasn't going to show you my books, but I'll show you some book dummies, some things like that, uh, some things that have never been seen maybe. So what do I got here? I'll show you a couple of these things. So let's see. This kind of kind of in the spirit of, of of this album that I showed you early, this kind of creepy uh creepy photographer spirit. I made this book, this book maquette, uh called The Most Beautiful Woman in Georgia. And what it is is a um it's a photo story about me traveling around the Republic of Georgia looking for the most beautiful woman. And I'm photographing, you know, from my car window. And, and there's a, you know, there is a conceptual reason behind this. This is this, uh, this quote from Kant. It says, uh, the Geor Georgian women have always been held extremely pretty by all Europeans who have traveled in their countries. I mean, there was a pride by Georgians. Um, and, and it was at a time where I was interested in uh, not always being this nice guy photographer, but, uh, but exploring a, a, like a different kind of voice as a narrator. And as part of that story, um, this woman, I, uh, I declared as the most beautiful woman in Georgia, but but her mom right here wouldn't let me photograph her. So the whole 
the rest of the book then is the, is the kind of the story of traveling throughout Georgia and then wanting to revisit that woman. And so uh, towards the end of the book, uh, that happens. And I travel back there. And this tells the whole story of traveling back there, trying to find her, talking to the mother, and eventually being denied permission again to photograph her. So it's like a real narrative storybook. Um, what was the other one I was going to show you? What did, what did I do with that? Oh, yeah. This is another kind of travel log, um, totally unpublished. And this is when I traveled with the musician Billy Bragg. And we made this trip um, on the Texas Eagle train. And we went from, from here uh, in Chicago to, to here in Los Angeles. And along the way, I photographed people. I brought this little portable printer with me. And, and I told stories about the trip, about Billy. Um, and then people I met Rhett wrote in this book and um, told little stories about themselves. This was really kind of interesting. I met this woman and... Uh, well, she wrote, my dad used to call himself the singing detective. He was a homicide detective in Dallas. He passed away in 2009. This is one of his songs he wrote about being a police officer. And so I photographed this, these lyrics that she was traveling around with. This, this is, she had this book of, of his lyrics. So the book is about like trains and journeys and, and, Music. This guy really went to town and wrote all this uh, amazing stuff in here. And this project just never came to light. Uh, just kind of faded away. This guy was a really good drafts person. So, well, that gives you a little window into my world. Um, you know, what else to show you? There's a bed in here. It's kind of my napping spot and my place to get away in the studio. Uh, what else? Record player. Uh, this is a copy stand here where we can photograph books that we put on our newsletter. Uh, always looking at the map. Yeah, I think that's about it. And... It's my first little uh, virtual uh, library tour. Hope you had a nice time, and hopefully I'll see you in real life one of these days. Bye.